All right, the next drawing we're going to do is called yeah, the tank. Um, this is one of my favorite drawings to do because it's kind of fun to be able to draw something that you recognize. Um, most people recognize this as a propane tank. Um, so we're going to dive into this one. This was, like I said, it's a, it's a fun one to do, but it also has uh, a couple tricks to create um, the hollowed out piece um, that is the tank itself. So um, this drawing is on two sheets. So when you're doing this, you'll notice um, the front view, top and bottom. Um, the front, right, left, whatever you want to call them are all similar. They're not quite the same because depending on how you rotate it, you'll see um, the handles change just a little bit. But in general, the front is the front. It's going to be the same no matter which way you rotate it. This is going to be 1060 alloy, so it is an aluminum. Um, MMGS is our units. We have A of 390. This also is a tricky dimension in that you have to set the dimension before you do the radius right here on this curve. Otherwise, this dimension is going to be off. Um, and then B is 435. That's the total height of the midsection of the tank. And let's go ahead and scroll down to the second part of the drawing. And what you're going to see here is you see the front view again. You see a section line drawn. So we immediately, as soon as we see the section line, we say, okay, where does that go? That goes section A to A, meaning A to A. Um, so we can see the section view. Now there's not any real dimensions on the section view, so the next thing we look for is any more detail on it, and we actually see two detail views. We see C and D. C is this bigger view, so again, you always have to think of these detail views as magnifying glasses. So I have this magnifying glass here, which takes us to detail C which is zoomed in of this, and this is where you can see the actual um, thickness of the wall of the tank, and then this middle section would be hollowed out, and you can actually see it's a four millimeter offset, or the thickness of the tank. Um, to, to kind of give you some perspective on that, um, 6.35 millimeters is not exactly, but pretty close to a quarter of an inch thick. So 6.35 millimeters is a quarter of an inch thick. So four millimeters is going to be something um, like three sixteenths, a little bit bigger than an eighth of an inch, but not much bigger. And then we have D, which is a zoomed in view of the actual handle. So you can actually see the hole being cut out right there. And we'll, we'll dive into those dimensions here in a second. <clears throat> so this one, if you think about how this one's drawn and uh, thinking back to your um, very first drawing we did, big drawings that we did anyway, the big rim, um, we use a command called revolve. So this is going to be very similar in that it, it's really hard to create this out of a solid block. You don't, like, as far as drawing it and cutting it out, it'd be really difficult. So what you have to do instead is think of, of it as a profile. So this profile here and then you'd revolve that profile around a center line, which is how you'd have to create that object. So that's what we're going to do here. So let's go ahead and dive into this. So new part. I'm going to do front plane sketch. We're going to start with the center line, vertical, infinite length. Okay, this one we're not going to do dynamic mirror. Um, we did that on the big rim. But for this purpose, we don't need it drawn on both sides. We actually just need one, and then we'll uh, revolve it 360 degrees. So let's go ahead and start out with our main dimensions. We have A and B. So we can see if we start right here as our origin, if I was to draw a line over, up, back up, and then close it, that's our main piece of the tank. So anytime you're looking at how to kind of deconstruct a drawing, um, I always look at the big chunks first. And, and for, for me, that's exactly what I saw. I was like, all right, we can start right there. So let's go ahead and start with a line. We're going to go out, up at an angle, back at an angle. Now this angle will match. So this actually we can use for this time because these angles will match. 
and we're not going to go close it all the way. We're going to go just short. And we have and we have a little line that sticks up. So it looks something like that. Smart dimension. We know A is 390. I'm going to start right here. 390, but we only draw, uh, drew half of it, so we're going to just divide by 2. There we go. And we're going to do the same thing up here. There we go. That was easy. We're going to do the overall dimension. So we see that is 435. And then we're also going to do the half dimension here. So 435 divided by 2. Puts us right in the center. We can see that one right there. Uh, if we go to the second page, we can see this is a 92, to 92 and a half degree angle, but the top and the bottom with a 45 degree fillet. We can also see over here, looking at this lip, and the hard part about reading this is you got to understand that you have uh, an offset to the inside of the tank, meaning you can't go to this line here. You have to go to here, which is your your actual um, initial construction lines to actually grab your dimensions. So we got to go from 20 from the top to that line, 25 from the center to that, and then a radius of 12 there. Let's go ahead and throw all those dimensions on. We have 92 and a half. You can see it's not a super steep angle and the reason this is going to say uh, make driven is because I did use that relation line uh, line whenever I was drawing that angle remember I snapped it to be the same so you don't have to put that on twice which is very helpful so the only lines we need to actually dimension are right here so we're going to go from here to here I said it was 25 height of this is going to be 20 and then we had a fillet of 12 right there. And then 45 right there and there. All right, so we have our, our base design here. We're going to highlight everything. And it won't grab the dimensions. It'll just grab the lines itself. And we're going to offset entities. Now when we offset it naturally goes to the outside. You can see if I zoom in here, you can see a little arrow right there. You need to tell it which way to go. So right now it's going to the outside. We're going to set the dimension to four. It's still going to the outside. We're just going to hit reverse. Mm -hmm. That goes to the inside. Check mark. All right, so that's looking pretty good for the wall thickness. The last thing that we got to do is make sure that this is um, what we call a polygon. So a polygon, as we've discussed prior, um, is the only way you can extrude something. It has to be a um, any sided shape, but the, the key word there is closed. <clears throat> so if we look at the top here, this is not closed. So the first thing you got to do is close from here to here. That one's good. And then we also need to go down to the bottom here and make sure that is closed. There to there. Now you can see it highlights as a polygon. <coughs> Excuse me. So now that we have a polygon, we can go ahead and revolve. So revolve boss space. It automatically does 360, and you can see that tank turned out beautifully. Just hit check mark, and there we go. So it looks pretty good so far. Okay. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a helper just to see if you're you're on the correct path without any material being added. If I hit evaluate mass properties, right now you can see I'm at 2916.58. If you're at that mass currently, you're on the right path for this one. All right, let's go ahead and add in the other pieces. So we know we have a bottom of the tank, so a stand, and then we have a top with some handles. So let's go ahead and start with the stand. So if we look at the bottom, we can see that there is two circles. One is 12 millimeters, and if I zoom in on this here, 
Okay, let me zoom. Oh, on the second page. There we go. So this is the current bottom of the object. So if I was on the bottom, this circle here that I have highlighted is this outer circle here. So we know we have to create another circle that's 12 millimeters away from that, and then a separate circle that's three millimeters to the inside of that one. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna select on the bottom, sketch, circle, we're just going to draw two circles, both from that origin. We want, want both of them directly from the origin, that way they're symmetrical. Now all we're going to do is snap some dimensions. So we're going to go from that circle to this circle and say 12. And then from this one to this one, and we're just going to say 3. So what that does is it creates two circles. Now again, SolidWorks is smart. You can see there's there's really not a lot going on right here, but you can see it actually did highlight a polygon because it's an inside of a circle. So we're going to extrude it. Again, SolidWorks is smart, so it said, okay, that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to create a, a thin layer right there. And so we're going to do that. And that dimension, see if we can find it here. Actually, I did not put that dimension on this drawing on this particular sheet. I will have it for you on the new sheet. Um, so when I post this, it'll show this dimension being 30. I don't know why I don't have that on there, but um, I will fix that before you guys see that drawing. But for the video purposes, you will see this as 30. So let's go ahead and throw that in as 30. There we go. Now you guys can see the base. And we're going to kind of do the same thing on the top. So we're going to do two circles. Same exact dimensions. So 12 and 3. The difference here is on the top, we actually have this cutout. So the handle is actually cut out, and there's 110 degrees of a cutout. So we got to add that in here. So what we're going to do to make that cut out is we're going to do a center line first. And just go from the center straight over. And we're going to add another line. This one's going to be an actual line though. And then one more line. So, and we're going to the outside circle. So you can see a center line, solid line, solid line. But this one again, um, these are going to the outside of the circle. I'm going to smart dimension those. As you guess it, 55 degrees. There we go. Now we just need to trim out the rest that we don't need. So we don't need any of that anymore. Don't need that. And then we don't need this inside. We don't need that inside. So what we're left with, again, is that polygon. This one right here is going to be 100 tall, so extrude boss base. 100. Starting to get close to the tank. All right, so front plane. I'm going to switch my views up just a little bit. So instead of seeing solid, I'm going to go to hidden lines visible so I can kind of see through the tank a little bit. The other thing I need to see is I need to see a center line. To see a center line of the entire object, I'm going to go to view, hide show, and use something called temporary axis. When I do that, it will show me the exact center of this tank. So if I'm looking at my 3D view, I can actually see the exact center of this tank. So again, front view, front plane sketch. And all I'm gonna do right here is I'm gonna draw a slot. Okay, first thing I need to do is you can see the slot right here. I think the second page has a better detail of it here where we can see it's 36 wide, 50 tall, 
50 from the top. Okay, so let's go ahead and throw on some of those dimensions. So we know it's 36 wide. We know it's 50 tall. And it looks like it's 50 from, from the center to the top. It is 50. So 50, 50, 36, 18. 18 should happen automatically. You shouldn't have to do anything separate on 18. Um, the main thing is here is we need to get this center point of the slot onto this line. To do that, we're going to use our control clicks or our sketch relations. So I'm going to select the center, hold down control, select that vertical center line, and say coincident. That puts it smack dab on that check mark. And we're going to have features, extrude cut. I'm going to go back to my isometric view and I'm going to turn my shading back on so I can see this a little bit better. I want to make sure it's through all. It says through all. That's good. Good. All right. So that created one of them. The problem is, if I'm looking at my view here, let me go back to uh, single page view. Is there a zoom to fit? There we go. You can see three of them on here. Okay, so to get three of them, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a new command we haven't played with uh, quite yet, which is called a circular pattern. Okay, so I'm going to use circular pattern. Again, that's in the features menu, circular pattern. It's going to say what direction do I want to go. I want to actually spin it around this vertical axis I have. So I'm going to use that axis. I want to go 360 degrees. Um, it says I actually only have three of them, and then it's saying, okay, now what do you want to actually copy? The circular pattern is a copy of several items. So what do I want to copy? Well, I want to copy this guy right here. Okay, well, I can see three of them doesn't quite work. It doesn't look quite right. Okay, but if I think about this logically, well, if this one is directly across from this one, that means if I'm doing this as a rotation, I would actually want four of them, which would put them 90 degrees apart. Because if I do three of them, they're 120 degrees apart, because 360 degrees in a circle. If I do four of them, 90 degrees apart, does it matter that there's one out here? No, because it's cutting out nothing. So check mark. There we go. Looking pretty good. Fill it. I'm going to do a fillet of 30, and I can see that right there, R30 times 2. That's the rounded edge right here and right here. And i got to zoom in for this one because I do want to select this edge right here. There we go. Check mark. And that is our tank. Okay, put in your isometric view, file, save, put your material on. Uh, make sure you um, put in your for your mass validation, and then you're good to go on this one. I'll see you on the next part.